We're going to move now to a time of. We're going to move into a time of testimonies. And I'm going to call for a prosper if you can lead on that for us. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, praise the Lord. It's a time of testimonies. I just want us to see what Jesus said about testimonies. So we have a scripture basis, amen? And I'm excited by what Jesus said in Luke chapter 17, verse 12 to 19. So you can grab your Bibles or your tablets, your phone, if you can refer to the scriptures. Luke chapter 17, verse 12 to 19, and I read, uh, it says, and as he entered into a certain village, there met him 10 men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, go, ye, go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass, that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, were there not 10 cleansed but where are the nine? There are not found that returned to give glory, glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. Amen. I will know of this story. And uh, I just want, even as we are reflecting on whether to give a testimony or not, I just want to start the ball rolling by giving my testimony so that um, you can be having yours also ready. Amen. I believe there are many testimonies in the air. Briefly, I had, I used to send some recorded um, audio to various people on my contact list and I stopped because at the point I thought, oh, people were not interested in that. So I was sending text messages of devotion messages. But a few weeks ago, one brother who is not in, even in ECC he called me, he said, Prosper, do you still, can you make those recordings for me? Because I have a channel and then I'll be able to turn it into, I mean, I mean the long and short, he has a channel well, uh, I mean, YouTube, and um, he has a lot of people. I mean, he wanted to make it into an evening uh, reflection. And so I sent it to him and he was able to turn it into an evening reflection, which has been continuing as a teamwork. And the, less, the, the lesson here is that we should not look down on small beginnings. Because this brother, he has 296 subscribers. And I'm not comparing, but I have 70 subscribers. So his 296 subscribers is not only in, in uh, England, in UK, in South Africa and all over the world. And I just say that, the, yes, that is evangelism. So the Lord, I mean, glory be to God that his word is going and uh, he asks, it's only the Holy Spirit that asks him to come and speak, I mean, to me. And it doesn't end there, that testimony, the other extension of it is that on one of the evening reflections that I sent, and I sent a message, those who remember who are on my contact, I did mention that if you don't find anyone who needs this message that you can send to, return the message to me. No one returned the message, but one came back and said, actually, this is what the person said. This is a colleague doctor who has left 
our for another place so many years ago. But still on my contact list. And I'm reading it as she said. He said, Thank you, dear Prosper. This really ministered to me. I lost my dear dad on the 22nd of the 2nd, 2022. That's February this year. And I am going through the motion with my family over our loss. It is well. God bless. And I just later on, I prayed with, with her and then give her some more info, message. And so I just thank God that even the little that he has asked me in obedience is touching lives of people. If it's only for that one person and it is worth it. And I give glory to God. But I know that it's more than one. Amen and amen. Amen. So the floor is open. Testimony time. It's blessing time. So you can raise your hand or you can mention your name and just, just come. We don't have the stage here. The world is the stage. So just speak. I can see a hand here. Um, that is, um, is that Regina? Yes. Okay, please, Regina, sister, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to give all the glory and praise to God today. Uh, it was, it wasn't an accident, it was a nasty accident. I thank God for his protection. I was going in the afternoon to pick my daughter from school on the 8316. It's a very busy road. And the road was not too, too busy at that moment. And there were two, two cars in front of me. And the Mercedes Benz was slowing down. So I stepped on my brake and start slowing down. There's a big van behind me and they just bash into my car and my car swept and uh, my foot was on the brake. So the car swept, I think it turned like twice, then it stopped. And then the van driver stopped as well. And all the cars around stopped, everyone ran out and they came to the scene. And they said, so he came and said, are you okay? And at that moment, I was in shock. I didn't know what I was doing. It was just like a dream. It was so quick, so I didn't even understand what has happened. And said it's an accident. So he came, he said, get out of the car, because it was the driver's side, but it, it was all bent. And he said, maybe there was a fire. So he tried to pull me out. And the door wasn't opening on the driver's side. And then, he forced the door open. That was the driver that hit me. He forced the door open and he got me out of the car. And he was just asking, are you okay? Are you okay? So people around the house, they, went, they all ran out to see what was happening. And there was a lady in front. I think her car was a dead car. And then she called 999. And then I called the police. The police took a long time to come and the fire brigade. So the guy actually, he drove my car out of the road because there was a long traffic now. And then he said, oh, I'm sorry, it's my fault. I wasn't looking and I bumped into you. So the police arrived and they asked if everyone, anyone injured. They said no one has injured, they said maybe at now, you never know. So just wait for the ambulance to come. And you know, the, the fire service came, they tried to clear the road and then the police came and asked to take the statement and to ensure them exchange insurance. And then take pictures of the car, gave us the case, case number. And all along, um, the people that came, God been so, <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say, because it's like God sent an angel. There was a guy that came, and he said he was a Ghanaian. So he keep asking, are you okay? Do you want any drink? Do you want to He stood there with me when everybody left, me, the driver, the three cars were there. I was trying to call my husband. And then um, the phone wasn't going through and my daughter was at school. So I tried to call his friend to get my daughter from school. And then um, the guy was still there. He was still, as I said, I can assist you. I can take your car home. I can drive your car. I can call this. He was just there trying to help me to like calm down. Then my husband was responded. So he was on his way. 
the, uh, the guy actually stood there with me, brought my car home. Um, although it's badly damaged, I think they said it's going to be right off, but we managed to take the car out of the road. And they brought me home, called the insurance and did everything. So, and God is great. He washes over us. He said his eyes are on the sparrow Amen. and he washes over our going up and our coming in. So, I give God all the glory for what he has done for me. So, that's my testimony. Amen. Amen. We thank God for, we'll be praying for all those who will be giving testimony. So, we thank God for his deliverance. From this, uh, um, Sister Miriam, are you your hand up? Please. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Over to you. Uh, okay. Thank you, the Pastor. Mine is a mixture of uh, a testimony and uh, um, a word of encouragement, maybe to, to someone. Um, I was um, I went to Ashbana, um part of last month and beginning of this month as well. And uh, I just went after the storm, you know, the, um, uh, the unit storm. But the week I was there, the weather was um, so favorable. It was so good, you know, to do prayer walks. But one of the days when I wanted to, to, to go outside and just walk around, I just felt God leading me. They've got a prayer center for, for the people who have never been there. They've got a prayer center which has got prayer rooms. And um, there's a library as well, which is used uh, a library for the presence as well as um, a library for the Westminster um, uh, Theology College. So I, I just felt led to go to, to the press center and I was thinking, okay, I'll go and pray. But my heart was telling me, you know, it's, it's nice and sunny. Why should I go indoors? But I still thought I should obey God's voice. And I went to the press center and I thought, oh, uh, uh, possibly I need to pray for something. But I went as far as the library, and um, it, there's a bit of traffic where the library is. And I, I went, and I was directed to go to the library. So I, I started looking at the books, not knowing what to do. My heart, I'm still looking out and thinking, it's a great day. I need to be out there rather than sit, sit, sitting in here in the library. So I took a book, sat down. Just when I was just about to start reading, um, a, a gentleman walked into the library. He was from the Westminster theology college and he came to get some books so the book i held in my hand which i was partially reading and partially praying trying to understand what god was speaking to me about was on healing so he asked me he said um, um do you believe that god really heals and i said yes i do and he said do you believe in deliverance i said yes um, i do believe in deliverance and the church i go to um if, uh, they do do deliverance sessions so I said, okay. And then is he introduced himself. He says that I'm studying theology and um, I've got an, an assignment that I'm doing. So um, I'm just going to pick up some books. So I said, okay. And then he started bringing up topics in the Bible. Uh, we started talking about the greatness of God. So whatever tro topic he brought about, so we would look at the greatness of God from the Old Testament, New Testament, and I'll give him testimonies to say that the greatness of God you know, still happens today. So, you know, God is, is such an awesome God. He's such a great God. And we were talking. And in the middle of talking, he just talked me and told me, God says you should pray for me. And I thought, okay, he's talking about later on when, when he goes, uh, he go different ways. I, I, I just said, okay. And then he said, God says you should pray for me now. And I thought, oh my God, you know, I, I was sort of like shocked because he's somebody who knew the Bible very well that I, I didn't expect the, him to say that. But at the same time, as soon as he said, God, you know, he used the voice which showed that, you know, like he, with authority, God says you should pray for me now. And at that particular moment, I felt the presence of God, you know, tangible presence of God on my right hand side. I was sitting facing him and I felt the presence of God on my right hand side, I turned, instead of praying, because normally when you're praying for somebody, you look at them, you know, so that, um, you know, as you're praying, you see what is happening to them. But I, as I turned, I just bowed down because it was so evident that God was with us. You know, God was present. I didn't know what I was supposed to be praying for, 
And so I just started praying as well, not even praying, it was more like having a conversation with, I could feel that there was somebody standing next to me, although I couldn't see because my head was bowed down, he was bowed down as well. So I started, you know, like just uttering some words and um, and I did that. And after, after some time, you know, I, I said, um, you know, amen. And we both kept quiet because we could still feel the presence of God was around. So we both, both kept quiet for maybe about five minutes. We didn't say anything. Then after that, um, you know, not um, where he was, I faced him. He started thanking God. He said, God is so amazing. Because I lost my dad, my mom last week. I'm going through a very painful divorce. I've come to this um, in our library several times. I've never found anyone seated here. And I never come in the daytime, but God today just impressed it upon my heart to come today. And I thank God that you were here because what you have prayed for. I can only say it is from God. Mm -hmm. But I didn't even know his situation. I didn't even know that he had lost his mom the, the previous week. Mm -hmm. And he was just thanking God and thanking God. And, you know, it was like, and even the time he was leaving, he was just so full of God and just thanking God because he just thought, you know, God really met him at his point of need, even if I didn't even know that um, he was so much in pain. But the thing that really touched my heart is the fact that we were not praying, we were not um, singing or worshiping, we were just talking about the greatness of God and God showed up. Mm. And that's how God is close to every one of us. And that's how he wants us to have an encounter with him because that man had his own problems, but God knew it and made it possible. But I can't explain the feeling that was around us, but all I can say is that it was just an amazing and awesome feeling. And I thank God for that. And I thank God for everything. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank God for such a div divine encounter. We thank God for you, take, you, you taking the opportunity, being the place and being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Uh, Sister Tony, do you have space for one more or we'll pray and then wrap up? Is anyone with a desperate testimony? Otherwise, we'll pray and wrap up the testimonies. Okay. All right. Let us let us pray. Yes, Pardon? yes, I, yes I do. Please come along. You have a testimony. Sister Gazette, but sorry, I'm not going to use my video. Am I? Oh, don't worry. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, you speak. The Lord hears. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's, okay. Um, that's just a little song bubbling up in my heart. Even though my testimony, I am writing it for the, for the whole church, but it's a, good, a great privilege to share with it. With this faithful few, and, and this is my video. So, and um, that song in my heart is saying, life is easy when you are up on the mountain and you've got peace of mind like you've never known. But then this change when you're down in the valley. Don't lose faith, for you are never alone. For the God of the mountain is the God in the valley. When things go wrong, he will make it. My brethren, I don't know 
I don't know how to start this testimony, but to make it short, I'm writing this testimony. To make it very, very short, the devil came like a, a big wave, a big storm, a very big storm to take my life away. In the year 2019, I lost twin pregnancies. That was not enough for the devil. In the year 2020, June, diagnosed with stage three fast growing cancer, breast cancer. Ah, so devastating. If anybody tell me that I will go through that through those situation, I will say the, the person is telling lies because being a nurse and a midwife, I am very, very careful with what I do with my life. And I have, and I have been very careful, I would say, with what I eat, what I do, and everything. I'm being a child of God too, a big blow. Where did this come from? Where did all this situation, these things, where did they come from? But God showed me that he is God. Amen. He is a faithful God. Mm -hmm. I remember Pastor Agenda when I told him, the first thing she did was to cancel the spirit of death. Mm -hmm. She barely held my hand and cancel the spirit of death. Mm -hmm. My brethren, the Lord saw me through the four, four extensive debilitating period of chemotherapy. I tell you, the Almighty God saw me through. Amen. 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 Even our sister, <laughs> Sister Hannah Dove, you can imagine in the time of that COVID, I wasn't sure whether that operation I went for, the enemy said, you, you know, hey, you're going into that hospital. Are you sure you come out of it? I said, devil, you are a liar. What I did was to call my sister. I never even know that she's, she, she's working uh, in the hospital where I had the operation. That faithful day, God made me to bust into her. I said, sister, come, come, come. I'm going to hijack you. I know you did not. Please just hold my hand. Follow me to the theater. Oh, God bless her. She did. She did. Followed me. And then, you no, know, followed her as well. Visited, checked out on me. Stahana Do, God bless you. Mm -hmm. My cellmate. My black people, I placed myself just like the word, um, the testimony, the, uh, the word of God, even by various children of God this night. I threw myself into the word of God as if I had no tomorrow. That, that was what saw me through. The Monday prayers, God bless you, see. You introduce them, um, you know. Somebody, a sister sent that link to me every Monday. That time till today, even if a flat time came, one of our sisters or uh, whoever said that, oh, they're going to stop. Say, please don't stop this prayer. Don't stop this prayer. Because this prayer saved my life. 
I threw myself into the word of God. There were two particular, not more than two, but this particular two. The Bible that said that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. The valley, I was at. I couldn't see it. I couldn't do nothing. No position was comfortable. But our God is so wonderful. Yeah, as I managed to get the particular side of my body and lay down to sleep, oh, sleep will take me. I'll only wake up in the following day and then observe that there is pain somewhere. And even in the midst of the pain, they gave me all the painkillers. My Deborah's and sisters, I bothered not to take any painkiller. I told my heavenly father, if it is the way you will take me home, I'm ready. But if it's not, I will come out of this situation. Yeah. Because even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. The midst of that death, going to hospital every day, every day, every day in the midst of that COVID, going for chemotherapy, God covered me. I carried my own atmosphere that the jam and the virus of Corona would come near me. Amen. Hallelujah. And that scripture that I held so tight in the spirit of Him. That red Jesus Christ from the dead lived in me. That same spirit will revitalize my mortal body. Amen. I told myself there are so just I was probably not had my spirit. I couldn't even read anything, but those scriptures were there in my heart. God is real. I know the devil, the devil, you are a loser, you are a liar in my life. I gave my life to Jesus as a teenager. He cannot reach now. He come and snatch me. Snatch me away from me, my beloved brethren. Snatch me away from my husband. Snatch me away from my family. Snatch me away from friends and where we shall. Then we cannot do it. At some point, the pain was so much. I just looked at my husband. I said, well, oh, whatever happens, please. Look after my mom for me. Look after my little son for me. It was so much that God said, you're going nowhere. Not even knowing that even my mother, I lost her last year. Even before she died, she never knew. I didn't tell her about the situation because that would even make her, whether she would have died before her time. I kept it away from her. So, what am I trying to say? Brothers and sisters, so what God cannot do does not exist you. I did a test. After a year, taking the treatment, my body is cleared of this deadly arrow of the enemy. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise so, God. If you're there, you think that when they give you diagnosis of cancer, have given you the certificate, please think twice if you're a child of God. Amen. Amen. Because if the spirit of He that raised Christ from the dead lives in you, that's that spirit will vitalize the mortal of God. God is awesome. Amen. What God cannot do, does not exist. Does not exist. Does not exist. Not solve does not, not exist. exist. Amen. 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 Then know that God, God is able to change it. He's Amen. Able to do it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 So Amen. shall we, even Amen. at this time, go into prayer? At this time, yeah, you can unmute, you can let's pray in tongues, even as I introduce our sisters and our brothers, I mean, those who have given testimonies. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for these powerful testimonies 
even those that have been spoken and even those that are in our hearts, even eternity is too short for this. But we thank you, Lord, even at this time. Even, oh, the last but not the least, and Sister Perpetual, even taking her through the valley of the shadow of death, that she fear no evil because Jesus, you are with her. And I pray even at this time, every loss of God, you bring a restoration into her life. In the name of Jesus Christ, you go, you keep her strong, oh God. We pray at this time, premature death in the family. We demolish it in Jesus' name. We thank you for our sister, oh Lord, even Regina also protecting her from the road traffic accident. And Lord, even your divine even protection and bringing destiny helpers, even to help her at the scene of the accident. And then now there was no, no, no harm to even her life or any other person. And we pray that God, you restore even the car, even the, I mean, that you bring a, one which is even better a replacement for in Jesus' name. Thank you for our sister Miriam. We thank you for the divine encounter. And the brother, even who lost the mom, and how you brought even at this time to be able to comfort him. We use even these losses as a point of contact for all those who are in the church who have lost their dear ones in the past few years So God. Even Lord, we pray that God, you, you touch each and every one, even in the name of Jesus. Even the comforter himself, the paraclete of the Holy Spirit, even will comfort each and every one who has lost a dear one, or lost a job, or lost everything dear to their heart, to oh God, that you bring a restoration even at this time. Hear our cry, O oh Lord, and you attend unto our prayers. And I thank you for even the evangelism opportunity, even to reach out to even the, the colleague of mine who, who even at the right time with the word, even to touch, even as she also lost the dad. Father, we even at this time, praying at this time that you continue even to be with the family, and all families, so Lord, people's groups who have lost dear ones, so God, even as I speak, we speak now. We pray that God, weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. You are the resurrection and the life. You are the one that whoever believes in you shall not die. And even when we die, we know that we'll rise again because you, it, death could not hold you captive. We shall not die. We shall live to declare the glory of God. We give you praise and we give all the glory to you and let the blessing continue to remain with us and our children's children. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless you. Over to you, amen. Sister Tony. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for every single time that you have been there for us. Point to the greatness of God and He encourages us as well. So we pray for many more testimonies next month. And so without further ado, I'm going to ask Pastor.